Welcome to the Not Old Better Show. I'm Paul Vogelsang, and this is episode number 447. Today's show is brought to you by Skylight Frame, Sun Basket Premium Meal Kits, and Lightstream Lending. As part of our Art of Living author interview series, today's show features author Elizabeth Marshall Thomas. Elizabeth Marshall Thomas has spent a lifetime observing other creatures and other cultures from her own backyard to the African savanna. Her books have transported millions into the hidden lives of animals. She's chronicled the daily lives of African tribes and even imagined the lives of prehistoric humans. Now, she opens the doors to her own. Elizabeth Marshall Thomas's new book, Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace, is part memoir and part intimate account and broad look at the social and historical traditions related to aging today. I will tell you that the book is charming, as is our guest Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, and her sense of humor and wit about growing older from the stereotypes of the elderly as burdensome to the methods of burial that humans have used throughout history to how to deal with a concerned neighbor who assumes you're buying cat food to eat for dinner is all wonderful stuff. Elizabeth Thomas Marshall will even offer a reading from her new book in just a bit. But before we join Elizabeth Thomas Marshall, I want to reach out and wish all a happy Mother's Day, which is coming up. It's an important day as a son or daughter, but it's difficult sometimes to find the right gift. My mom and I are close. But as well as I know her, I know that at almost 90, there aren't a whole bunch of great gifts to give her for Mother's Day, which is why I love the skylight frame. And that was just the perfect gift for my mom. I know because I was so excited to give it to my mom. I gave it to her already. (laughs) Before sending it to my mom, I set it up preloaded it with photos and it is super easy. I stay in regular contact with my mom, but the phone lacks that necessary visual and video chat just doesn't seem to cut it. So after sending the frame to my mom, I can still send photos to a custom email address and each image is uploaded instantly for my mom to see. My mom could even tap on the heart button on the frame and it will tell me that she loved that specific photo. That makes the frame interactive and so fun to use for all of us. And it's so simple and and it's really easy for my mom to see what we're all up to on the other side of the U.S. all the way across country. And it's so great for us to all stay connected and for my mom to stay connected with my sons and my wife Gretchen. It's a great way to feel close to those you love even when you're separated, especially right now with limited travel and quarantine. You know, there seems to be no end to our social distancing at the moment. This is such an isolating time as we are just trying, all of us, in our family at least, to keep my mom safe and healthy. But the skylight frame gives my mom a little glimpse of us every day. And then when we talk on the phone, she can talk to the boys about the pictures that we sent. The skylight frame is 100% satisfaction guaranteed. If you don't love your skylight frame, they'll offer you a full refund. And so now, as a special holiday offer to the Not Old Better Show audience, you can get $10 off your purchase of a skylight frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash old and enter old. (laughs) That's right. To get $10 off your purchase of a skylight frame, just go to skylightframe.com slash old and enter code old. That's Skylight, S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T, frame, F-R-A-M-E, dot com slash old. All of this will be in our show notes, so please check it out. With all that in mind, let's listen as Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, author and octogenarian, tackles old age in her clever, astute memoir, reading from her new book, Notes on Aging, with something like grace. The end of our journey appears as we age. Having collected a mixture of facts, friends, relatives, mistakes, triumphs, tragedies, and possessions. Thus, old age is a, is a pre-death transition, and how we perceive it can depend on how far life has brought us. When we're young, death and those approaching it seem to have little to do with us. Old people don't look or act like us. They might be almost be a different species. As for death, we don't want it, of course, but why worry about it? It seldom happens to young people. We can freely do dangerous things. By middle age, we've learned more. We may be only in our 50s, but we know about aging, and we're saying we're not as young as we used to be. 
we're paying more attention to what we eat and how we exercise. 25 years later, we realized we were spring chickens while having such thoughts, because by then we're approaching the old age transition. Gosh, uh, this is different. Do we feel the transition? We can't run fast and we're careful climbing stairs, but we're still living, so we're lucky. But maybe we're starting to feel unlucky. Living like this, you call this lucky? We're prejudiced against old age. Hopefully this book will help with the prejudice. It mentions the rough parts of aging, but only to tell the whole story. So it's totally truthful, and it points out the good parts too. Some of these may come as surprises, because we may not realize what they are or see them as good. If we retire from a job we like, for instance, we may fail to see our new freedom as an opportunity to do some of the things we never had time to do when we were working. Of course, we must adjust as best we can, but knowing what's coming can help us prepare and understand. Please join me in welcoming to the Not Old Better Show, our guest today, Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, author of the new book, Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace. Ms. Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, welcome to the program. Thank you. It is a pleasure to speak with you. I know my audience is going to know you well. I'm excited about talking to you. This is uh, a great time in our life. It's a difficult time in our lives. You've written a book entitled Growing Old, Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace. And I, I want to start there. I want to start with this this kind of this first question about the book and, and just say to you, there are a lot of books about old age. Most of them are written by younger people than, than you. I, I'm no spring chicken myself. We've heard you read and you use that phrase and so I'll use it to describe me. I'm not – I'm no spring chicken. But the big difference in the book is that your age, your expertise really applies directly. And so why did you decide to write a book about growing old? Um, originally, my title, the title of the book was um, Old Age, uh, Adventure to the Unknown. And um, the publishers didn't like that, so they put on the new title of, of Growing Old. And, uh, I mean, it's a very nice title. I got perfectly glad, but it wasn't, um, I didn't put, <laughs> I don't have a tie to it because, I mean, I don't know why it was, it was better than the other. But anyway, it's fine. Um, um, why I wrote a book about about growing, well, it seems to me like a very interesting procedure. I mean, it, 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 things are really different. Um, you know how to handle them. You you can sort of figure out how to handle them better than you might have done years earlier. Uh, I don't know why. Um, uh, you can be the same person living in the same house, the same person you always were living in the house you've lived in for many years, but for some reason, the factors of old age make it make it different. And I mean, I think that's pretty interesting. I, I found the whole process pretty interesting, the whole process of aging pretty mm-hmm. interesting. Yes, the book is the book is very interesting. I I think this process of aging is is interesting too. My own mother is approaching ninety, and she'll be she'll be ninety in in August. I know she's going to enjoy the book. You write very honestly. Oh, I hope so. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> I'm I'm very excited to share it with her, and and I think it it has such an honest tone to it about your own approach to age ninety, and you talk about losing loved ones, and we can all relate to that. You talk about our failing body. Certainly, yeah. I could personally yeah. relate. Making some arrangements ahead of time for our passing, memory loss, and kind of all of these areas. I, I enjoyed reading about your descriptions of four animals that you'd witnessed reacting to their own upcoming deaths. And I thought that was a fascinating story. I wondered if you'd tell us that story just, just briefly. Oh, sure. And what it was that fascinated you about that experience, observing these reactions? Well, several things fascinated me. Okay, what what happened was I was driving on uh, uh, near our house. We live in, in the country, and this is a small country road. I was driving up. The speed limit is 30 miles an hour, and I was going 30 miles an hour. And out of the woods came a squirrel. And I, it was, it was so close. I wasn't sure I could. And he, he looked, he looked, 
he came from the right and he looked to his left and saw me coming in the car and he 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 i guess he felt he couldn't get away and he covered his eyes with his hands okay that was one the next one was a raccoon in the on the same road. A raccoon came out of the woods, also on the right side, and also I was. He came right in front of me, and uh, he he covered his eyes with his hands. I mean, okay. The third. I mean, to me, to me that's that was. I was. I was somewhat surprised at that. In a way, somewhat surprised. Uh, then the third thing was a a vole that lived in uh, that lived in um, it, it must have lived under the under the wood of the of the porch. We have a screen porch, and it was in the corner of the porch. And two cats were were um, approaching it, and they they had it cornered, and they were going to kill it. There was no question. That, I mean, there was no question about what was going to happen. And she covered, the little vole covered her eyes with her hands. Well, what happened as a result of all these things was when it came to the, when it came to the cars about to hit the squirrel and later hit a raccoon, I swung the car into the left lane just as fast as I could, and I missed him. The squirrel, the squirrel went back into the, into the, the squirrel kept crossing the road. He, he he kept on going the way he had been going. The raccoon turned back and went into the bushes. And when it came to the vol, when it, when I saw what the cats were doing, I went charging towards them, yelling at them, and they turned to look at me. And while they were looking at me, the vol saw that she could make it and got away. So they all got away. The last the last such episode was was a lion. Um, we were in southern Africa, and with a with at night, we were out in the in the on the felt, and uh, we came upon some lions, a group of lions. We were with a farmer, and he shot them. He shot at them, and he he hit he he hit at least two, and uh, well, we hit, we knew he hit one. And so, but it was just wounded. It went, it kept going. And you, they say wounded lions are very dangerous. That may or may not be so. But anyway, we, my brother, the the farmer was too scared to go after, pitch dark. The farmer was too scared to go after the lion. So my brother went with a, my brother and another guy went and I went with them. They had flashlights and so forth and, and a gun. So they found him and uh, he was hiding in some bushes. He was wounded, and when he 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 obviously he knew what a gun was, if only because he had seen his own group being shot at with a gun. So so um, he turned his head when he saw us with the gun. He turned his head and closed his eyes, so he wouldn't see it. And they 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 shot him. I couldn't help him. He was killed. Okay, that was the story. But that they would, that they, I mean, I've I've actually seen it since, seen things like that since that was over a period of time. But the, they don't want to see, they feel the same as we do. For many, many years, I mean, for, I mean, hundred over a hundred years, um, uh, the science, the position science took was that animals do not have the, the thoughts and feelings that we do. Um, now, that, that since in recent, very recent times, that's been completely disproved. I mean, it was like the flat earth theory, but it's, it's, uh, it was, it lasted a long time. And, and, uh, um, so, um, that was, that was kind of a factor in that because, People would assume that that animals would not have a feeling about about a being about to die, and uh, when, as a matter of fact, they actually do. So, thank you for that. It takes really a keen eye on your part to notice that and to be aware that they have an understanding of this too. Yeah. Well, you have to be interested in animals and keep and you know just keep your eyes open and see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
you have to be interested. Yes, yes. It, and and the book, it's it's not so much a manual or an explanation or really an instruction set of instructions on aging and dying, but it's it's a memoir and uh, it's your own thoughts about the subject, which is a subject that we just. We rarely discuss, and so I want to ask you the question: what, Why do you why do you feel it's so important that we have this honest conversation about the subject of of aging that helps us prepare to understand the benefits? Because you write about those, you write about the challenges, but you also write, and you mentioned this in in the uh, the reading too, the the prejudices of growing old. Why, why is it so important that we have this conversation? Well, it's it's um um. Well, thank you for thinking it's it's important. <laughs> I think it is. Yes, <laughs> Very it kind is. of you. Um, I I I think it's interesting. It's 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 very much there. It happens to everybody who lives is lucky enough to live that long. Um, and forms of this, I'm sure. I'm sure that everybody who has reached the age of eighty, whatever, um, has had plenty of experience along the lines I'm I'm talking about. A lot of a lot of people. Um, well, it doesn't seem to be common knowledge. It it uh, or not very common knowledge. I mean, everybody sort of knows, but nobody kind of talks about it. I'm not sure why people don't talk about it, except that old age is considered a bad thing. I mean, it's considered old people are are very um, compared to other parts of the world are very disrespected. I mean. Look! Look at recently they decided to let the the, the uh, um, I guess it was Trump and the and the the governor of uh, the uh, lieutenant governor of Texas were saying that let the old people die because you know who needs them so they could have they could for some reason this would benefit the stock market. We're just saying we're not we are not worth very much. We'll be right back with our guest, Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, author and octogenarian who tackles old age in her clever, astute memoir, Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace. And when we come back, Elizabeth Marshall Thomas will tell us about aging with grace in these challenging times. Fascinating. Please stay tuned. Hey, it's Paul. I want to take a quick moment and tell you about our sponsors today. Right now, our new normal is all about delivery, product delivery, package delivery, and importantly, food delivery. If you are looking to reduce unnecessary trips out and trying to avoid sold out grocery stores, then check out Sunbasket, our sponsor today. It's a perfect and delicious solution for the times we are living in. Sunbasket is the premium meal delivery kit. This is great food because it's certified organic and it strives to source organic produce 100% of the time. Sunbasket is also dietitian approved and the meal plans like paleo, lean and clean, gluten-free, vegetarian, Mediterranean, and more make healthy eating easy. Plus, Sunbasket gives back to their communities through Feeding America and local food banks and employee programs. We in the Not Old Better Show audience really appreciate all this. For us, my family, we are all together now. Sun Basket delivered a big box of healthy, delicious meals straight to our door. The boxes are filled with fresh, delicious food, and they make it easy and convenient. We all can get there together in the kitchen and prepare this. And everything is pre-portioned and ready to prep and then cook. So you can enjoy a dinner full of organic produce and clean ingredients in as little as about 15 minutes, no matter how much experience you have in the kitchen. And I'll tell you, we are all at home now, so there's a bunch of us in the kitchen at once and we're just all getting together and cooking this sun basket food which is fantastic so each week sun basket offers a wide range of recipes to choose from so you can try personalized mouth-watering dishes for my family we have enjoyed the roasted salmon and the miso glazed eggplant wow fantastic stuff and sun basket facilities have the highest levels of food and employee safety that's something that we're hearing all about in the news today and that's something that's really important to me, really important to our Not All Better Show audience. They're reinforcing these strict adherences to their existing standard operating procedures and increasing sanitation frequently in their distribution centers in order to protect 
you and your family. Sunbasket saves money, saves time, and offers you healthy, delicious, personalized meals delivered right to your door, which is exactly what we want right now. And right now, Sunbasket is offering $35 off your order when you go right now to sunbasket.com slash N-O-B and enter in the promo code N-O-B at checkout. That's sunbasket.com slash N-O-B. Enter the promo code N-O-B at checkout for $35 off your order. Remember, sunbasket.com slash N-O-B and enter promo code N-O-B. Plus, there's a 100% mouth-watering guarantee. We want you to love your Sun Basket. So 100% money-back guarantee on all food is offered. We're not happy unless you're happy. So remember, sunbasket.com slash N-O-B and enter the promo code N-O-B. Don't wait. Order now. Thanks. One more message to share with you. You know, a lot of us are able to spend some time on things very important to us right now. We just plain have the time. I've taken it upon myself to review some of my family's finances. And in particular, I've been looking into credit card finance charges. I've been paying too much money in interest charges. So in the interest of our Not Old Better Show audience and a money discussion that we frequently have here, which is always an important one, I want to introduce you to my newest go-to solution. And as I say, an important one for these times. The name of our sponsor is Lightstream, and they're a division of Sun Trust Bank, a long-standing, well-known financial institution. Lightstream will tell you in a couple quick steps that you may be paying more interest than you need to, and that you may be able to refinance your debt today with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream. You can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with AutoPay, which is much lower than the national average credit card rate of over 19% APR. Plus, there are absolutely no fees. The application is quick and easy and is 100% online. You can even get your money as soon as the day you apply. You can quickly roll balances from multiple credit cards into one single monthly loan payment. It was really fantastic stuff. You know, once I heard about Lightstream, I immediately checked into a consolidation loan. And in just a few hours, I had my approval and funds ready to be transferred. It was awesome. Apply today to get a special interest rate discount and save even more. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash not old. Remember, that's lightstream, L-I-G-H-T, S T R E A M dot com slash not old. All of our sponsor information will be in the show notes today. Please check it out and remember any light stream funding is subject to credit approval. The rate includes a 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash not old for more information. Thanks everybody. And now back with our guest, Elizabeth Marshall Thomas talking about her new book, Growing Old, Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace. Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, in your book titled Growing Old, and the the subtitle is Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace. We are, of course, with Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, who's the author of the book. And we've been talking a little bit about the book. And I, I want to ask you about this subject of grace, because it, you, you refer to this some, as though it's something like grace. Shouldn't we just simply say notes on aging with grace? Why qualify it? Well, um, as as I mentioned, the, the publishers wrote the title. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> but my guess, something like grace, well, um, it, uh, an effort at, at grace, maybe that, maybe that's mm-hmm, weird. Mm-hmm. It, it's apparent in the book, in, in the book is... is is charming. It's this really wonderful, intimate account of of how we can kind of look at some of the social and historical traditions that are related to aging. And sometimes we just don't have that much grace oh, with yeah. it. I, I personally, I agree with you a hundred. Yeah. So no, please. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just agreeing in an emotional mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's emotional to react to somebody like the lieutenant governor of Texas saying that 
you know, that old people should volunteer to die to save the economy. That's that's certainly not a graceful thing to say, and <laughs> no, that's not no. a graceful thing to really? suggest. No, really? Really? <laughs> Why isn't he dying to say? Would he do that? Yeah, yeah, I think we have a lot to contribute, and I think we are doing it with grace. And also, whether we contributed or not, we did in the past. We, you know, paid our taxes all those mm-hmm. years. We did whatever was wanted mm-hmm. of us, and a lot of people advanced things in the world a lot. Look at all. The, what, what about the people who fought in uh, everything from that would be no, World War Two? Doesn't have any survivors at the moment, I don't think. But mm-hmm. from all the others, all the others do. How about that? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that count? Yeah, I think it counts for quite a bit. Yeah. Well, well, I, I have really one final question for you, and it has to do really kind of with the end of the book. And and it's nice because the book, I think, is advice filled for uh, all ages. And and I wondered if you'd give some advice about about how we can be dignified during these times with respect Ooh. to aging. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm dignified when it, with respect to aging. Well, I, th- I think to accept what's happening and to try to understand it, and most of it is not very hard to understand, I mean, you forgetting things, forgetting names. Um, there's just a part of your brain that quits on you, just about, and you find that you can describe the the person. You can describe the person where they live, what, what they look like, everything about it. But you said the one thing you can't remember is their name, and somebody else will hopefully remember it for you. Um, but I mean, if you get used to that kind of thing and learn how to deal with it a little bit. Um, that's not difficult, and lots of people have have do that and have done that. So I mean, it's it, it's kind of a good thing to think about, and also to think that it's possible to do that, which it certainly is, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you don't have to look forward to that kind of thing with fear. <laughs> For you can look toward it as something you know you'll be able to manage, mm-hmm. some, you know, in your way. Well, Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, our guest today, thank you so much for your generous time. Thanks so much for the book, Growing Old. Oh, thank you. Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace. Uh, What a pleasure it's been to talk to you. The book is witty. It's uh, filled with wisdom. And you've just been a wonderful guest. And I I just appreciate all that you're you're doing to help us uh, understand aging more. So thanks so much for your time today. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure. My thanks to Elizabeth Thomas Marshall and her new book, Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace. My thanks to our sponsors, Skylight Frame, Sun Basket Premium Meal Kits, and Lightstream Lending. Please check out our show notes for more details and support our sponsors. My thanks to you, our wonderful Not Old Better Show listeners, for spending some time with us today. I know your time is valuable, and I really appreciate you spending some of that with me. So thank you very much. Please stay safe, be well, stay healthy, and observe some smart social distancing right now. Let's talk about better. The Not Old Better Show. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>